Hi everybody and welcome back. I am of course joined by Dave from Hawk War Games and earlier today you'll have seen the two player starter box for Dropfleet Commander mm. but what we have now is everything else for Wave 1. Oh my yep. god. <laughs> it's here. All of it's here. It's all the lovely toys. Chinese. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay so uh, what we're going to be looking at is the one player starter boxes and some of the activation cards because you're doing yep. a deck of activation cards for the game yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, we can do those first because they're, they're, yeah, sim they're simple. Let's get them um, out of the way and make everybody yeah. wait for the shiny, yeah. shiny ones. So we'll just <laughs> we, we put, put these, these, nice, put these over nice there. Little, nice little pile. We'll, we'll so, get yeah, to so we'll your get activation to cards, there you go. Yeah. Okay, um, so. They're standard for all four factions, so there's only one set. Mm -hmm. um, they're not like the command cards in Drop Zone. Drop Fleet has command cards, uh -huh. um, but they're not out until next year. So, uh, right. I'm not going to talk about those now, but. These are more or less essential for most games. You can write your own out. You don't have to use these. You can just put them on paper, card, anything you like. Yeah. Um, you these only, just make life handy. Yeah, yeah. You only need about seven of them, six or seven of them in a tournament size fleet. Mm -hmm. um, so these give you a lot of... They're all blank. Uh, yeah. The only difference is the letter in the yeah, top corner. You'll get, get onto there. these after a while. Yeah. Uh, the later the letter is, the less of them you get, because obviously you're going to always need an A, and you're not often going to need an E. Yeah. So um, jumping through, jumping through, jumping through. Yeah, yeah. So they're they're very simple. Um, what they're for is they're for saying what's activating effectively, yeah. and it's important that they are cards of some form because you start. It's a really important, really important part of the game. Mm. That's one of my favourite things that Andy put in there is. Mm. Um, is that you? Well, we all your battle groups are on your card. Uh, you wouldn't shuffle them, no. no. But every at the beginning of every turn, you decide what order your battle groups are going to go in, ah. and you put them face down. And at that point, you can't change the order. I so see. it's much more strategic and less tactical. You have to think in advance about what's going to happen that turn, mm -hmm. and you have to kind of outpsych your opponent and work out what they're going to do in what order. Uh, yeah. And also, they ha they have quite a bit of information on them, so they've got the. Um, They've got all the ships that are in that battle group, mm -hmm. and they've also got the total strategy strategy value mm -hmm. of that battleship, battle group. Sorry, <laughs> which is basically a combination of the tonnage values of all the ships in it. Mm -hmm. So the more tonnage you've got in a battle group, the bigger the strategy value and the slower that battle group is. So if you turn both over, the one with the lower value is the one that goes first. Uh, because the strategy it's rating. And yeah, yeah. So the, you know, so it's important. You know, do you want to go first with your big battleship, or do you want to try and stab at them with your frigates before they get to do anything? Yeah. So there's, it's a really important element of the game. As I say, these are not essential, but you know, they're not expensive, and yeah. I imagine that most players will probably pick up a deck at some stage. And honestly, it just looks like a really handy yeah. thing. and, you, and you you've got it? you've got loads of them. So when you change your fleet, which you're going to do a lot, you know, yeah. you're going to have plenty of cards to, you know, you could share a deck. There's all sorts of things you can mm. do. Well, I mean, like, even what I would do is, you know the, the clear plastic sleeves you get? I would get yeah. a set of those, pop these in, permanent marker, and just as I'm changing stuff out, change these out, just to keep that, that background so I look yeah. at it and I know what it is. Yeah, that works. You know, it, it's pe players can do what they like with them. Mm -hmm. um, but they're there, very yeah. handy, a kind of essential product, really, for, yeah. for the game. Okay, uh, let's jump into one of the one-player mm -hmm. bat battle boxes, okay? Yeah. So... Uh, I assume this has less than our two-player starter box. Um, it has the same number of ships. Mm -hmm. um, before we get into the unboxing, I'm just going to add a very okay. quick caveat here. These boxes are right. pre-production digital prints. Got it. Um, what that means is um, there was also an, an error with the colour management, which is a technical thing. But Got it. what it means is they don't look as good as the real ones. Okay. The real ones will be more vibrant, brighter coloured, mm -hmm. and they will be shinier than these. Um, it's just a little minor thing, but if you kind of go, mm, packaging's not bright, it's mm -hmm. the real ones are bright and punchy. We'll oh. actually... Well, uh, let's, let's, pop the, let's pop the two of them up and we'll do the, the UCM and the Scourge first. Now, it's the exact same as what you got in the, the two-player starter set, but divide yep. it up. You're not getting the rule book. you're not getting the tokens. Yeah. And I think that's it. Uh, yeah, so you, you do well, you'll see what you get. <laughs> so, oh. Okay, so, uh, if you take that, sir. Mm-hmm. So, uh, ah, now this is different. So in this one, instead of getting the sprue of, uh, of sticks to actually have your miniatures sitting on, you get a little baggie with enough to do everybody in it, and the, the single sprue of widgets. widgets. Yeah, you get a spare one of those, you get a whole sprue. You will get your, of course, Mark III bases. You will get your, your cruiser sprue. Three of those. Three there off. You will then get the... Frigate sprue, one thereof, which will build four. 
You're then getting... Uh, is this the same pre-build that you uh, had? In yeah, the... it is. It's the, um, the same... Um, obviously, that folds out. Yeah. Um, it's, just, it's the same um, fast same play sheet. sheet. Yep. Uh, which is also useful because obviously these all these single players all have the same recommended build. Mm -hmm. You really don't have to stick to it. If you've never played before, all the support material is kind of there to help you yeah. with that standard build. Mm -hmm. You know, swapping out a ship is not going to cause any problems really. You just, you know. Yeah. But it's just there to make new players, make life easy for new players mm -hmm. really. Well, that, that's the key because this is a brand spanking new game. You want everybody to be jumping in, playing games as quickly as possible with as yep. few speed bumps as possible. Yeah. So uh, you're also getting your instructions for building in here uh, for the frigates and for the cruisers. Again, this will fold out, I believe. Yep. To build all your different yeah. variants. These are all folded because obviously the box is smaller, yep. so you have to fold them to fit them in. Yep. You've then got this for the, the standard build. For your activation cards with mm -hmm. the spare ones, same as the ones in the two-player. Yep. You've then got stickers again with uh, your altitudes, your damage, and then and your ship names. all your names. Which is, yeah. I love the ship names thing because it's just such a nice detail. Adds a nice narrative mm -hmm. chunk to the game. And that's the okay. rest of your sprues so for that I will there. So pop this to the side. So these, it's also worth noting actually that the single player box, um, they're also a good way of adding to your fleet. Mm -hmm. You can do that with the frigate and the cruiser boxes as well, which are out in wave four. Mm -hmm. But you know, if you want to add more ships, you don't have to build the recommended build and you've got three cruisers and four frigates in this box. So you can build those as more or less anything of that tonnage yeah. in the game, which yeah. is cool. Well, I mean, look, I, I've got a few images here from different builds. So if you can tell me what they are mm -hmm. and if they come in the starter box as a recommended build or if it's uh, yeah. something additional you can add. So okay. there's, there's your box art. That's the actual colors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, these are, two, um, these are two of the recommended cruisers. So you mm -hmm. can see them nice and big. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the Seattle. You can just see those fighters and bombers in there inside the hangar. Yeah, yeah, on and right the Berlin there. on the left with the burn through. Mm -hmm. Uh, then moving swiftly along, I believe we have some of the frigates here. Uh, yeah, so that's the Taipei and the New Orleans. Mm -hmm. And then the last one, which is the monster of UCM. Uh, this is, well, one of the monsters. This is the other heavy cruiser, the St. Petersburg. Wait, that's just a heavy cruiser? Uh, yeah, that's a heavy cruiser. So the Moscow is the one in the standard build. It's got yeah. four heavy mass driver turrets, the Moscow. Yeah. Good all-rounder, mm -hmm. solid choice. Better for a beginner. Yeah. Um, this, the St. Petersburg, has two bone through lasers, mm -hmm. which is powerful, but it's front arc narrow. It's mm -hmm. a big ship, um, much harder to wield, mm. and it's it has a different purpose in game. So whereas one's a broadsword, this is a rapier? Yes. Um, but the one thing that bone throughs do, actually, that's tactically different from guns, because it's mm -hmm. not just another way of rolling dice to do damage, Yeah. Um, is that bone throughs have a roll called flash, most of them. Uh -huh. What that does is... When you hit another ship, you put spikes on them, mm -hmm. which is really important because then it gives your other ships more range to shoot at that ship. Mm -hmm. So think of them as like painting the target. Literally, right. it's just the effect of all that heat hitting the ship and just heating up the hull. Mm -hmm. It's just going to make it more visible to sensors. Gotcha. So that's the purpose of burn through weapons, beyond being a gambler's weapon, because they're all gambler's weapons, because they can be amazing. <laughs> they can be terrible, depending on what your dice are like. Mm -hmm. uh, but they will always have this flash effect, which is the real reason why I think you should take some burn through ships. I don't know. The, the burn through lasers scare me because they can keep doing that damage. Um, yeah, they can. There is a cap, though. Mm. There's a, there's um, We right. introduced a cap okay. to the burn through. So they've all got burn through brackets and a number. And that's right. the maximum number of hits you can inflict before the opponent takes saves. Okay, that 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 makes a sense. Yeah, because you can't just keep rolling sixes forever, you know. Yeah, because well, I mean, like eventually the energy's going to dissipate. So yeah, and the bigger yeah. burn throughs have a higher cap. Obviously, mm. you're going to potentially do more damage with those. All right, uh, we'll have a quick scan through the sketch box. So uh, if I pull this out again, uh, again, this is the exact same setup as was in the two-player starter set. Only this is a single-player set, so obviously. You're going to get your Mark III uh, bases. You're going to get three of your cruiser sprues, which are all lovely and shiny. And then you're going to get your frigate sprues, which is going to build you four thereof. Then Back you here have, with bases. Yep, you have all of the the bases with the pegs and the, sp uh, the widgets. And then you've got all your paperwork again. So you've got your, your base build, which falls out. You've got all your instructions, cruisers and frigates. You've then got this, which is your basic build, and then you've got your sticker sheet again with the names. Yep. <sighs> you're going to have them, by the time you've bought a fleet, you're going to have loads of spare naming stickers. Mm -hmm. And we've also given you everybody spare stickers as well. So if you mess one up and don't put it on right, that's not a problem because yeah. you're going to have others. So 
it's not a you know yeah, you're gonna have so spares that and they're all generic so even if you really mess up and mess up everyone you have you can borrow a couple <laughs> off your mates yeah yeah there's you know there's gonna be loads <laughs> of spare ones knocking around keep them just in case you know it's always useful to have spare bits all right well let's let's take a look so this is the final box art that we're gonna see so yeah i see what you mean it's it's got more of the hues coming through. It's more vibrant. So yeah. if, if I see that sitting on the shelf, yeah, my hand might wander up and go, oh, what's this? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I've got a few more images of the actual ship. I mean, again, tell me if they're in the yeah. box or if there's something uh -huh. to maybe look at as your, your next yeah. step beyond. So we have... Um, that's the Shenlong, mm -hmm. uh, the heavy cruiser, mm -hmm. um, and the Wyvern, which is the missile cruiser. Uh-huh. Both in the starter? Yeah, both in the starter. Well, any of these are in the starter, as it were, but just not recommended. Re in the build, recommended build, build, Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, then we have a couple of frigates. So these uh, yeah, are... Yeah, that's the Gargoyle and the Harpy. Yep, so they're both on the recommended build. And along with this, in Wave 1, the rulebook is going to be out as well, and that yeah, has yeah. a nice section in there that I noticed that actually takes you through what each weapon type is. Yeah. Because I look at a burn-through laser on the UCM, I very quickly recognize it. I look at this, it's very alien. Oh yeah, the Scourge so. is obviously a lot more alien. You yeah. know, you're on this one, on the Gargoyle, those tubes there, that's where the um, that's where the dropships drop out of. Mm -hmm. Scourge dropships are very vertical in yeah. drop zone, so you can imagine them kind of coming out of those tubes. Yeah, just being... Yeah, and out. the Harpy, the um, Oculus weapons are those red dots, the mm -hmm. kind of eyes on the ship, so yeah. they're all guns. Mm -hmm. So, you know, once you get used to it, the more red eyes, the scarier the gun, the firepower of that ship is in... Yeah gun form mm -hmm. you know guns i'd describe guns as just ordinary dice yeah, to do damage it, they don't have special rules or anything they're just normal guns yeah but it, it's having that nice section in the rule book to say this this is this this is this this is this oh yeah they're like visual nice text section it's, yeah. if you're familiar with any of the drop zone stuff it's the same kind of thing it, little mm -hmm. thumbnails of the actual miniatures and showing you what all the bits do in the game you know for yeah. fluff fluff purposes effectively yeah but, but it's cool it's, it's nice helps to have you recognize you know you look at an enemy ship and you're like right i know what those guns are yeah we've also got um there's a full page dedicated to every cruiser sized ship or bigger mm -hmm. and the frigates are two per page but uh -huh. that's a whole page of a4 for each class so yeah. you get to see the ship nice and big mm -hmm. you can see all the different weapons yeah, on it I'm, physically i'm guessing there's a, a little bit of text along there with it oh yeah yeah there's, there's the background text there's the names of the ships there's at least four um, it's kind of famous ships or infamous ships, yeah. Of, depending on which faction it is. But <laughs> my, my, my scourge, you're innocent in this. We 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 took territory. We've been holding it. What what do you mean this is yours? We've had this for what two hundred years. Yeah. So there's <laughs> you know there's there's a lot of that. Um, yeah. There's actually we also another thing, little thing we added, which mm. I mentioned in the rulebook video. But there's a little um there's a little little box for the actual real world physical dimensions and. Yeah dimensional tonnage uh, nice. displacement of that ship <laughs> which i've done on the computer because they're done on cad so i can do volume uh, to you work could, out you, the you, real world volume in meters cubed uh, all right. of the ship so a, a challenge you, then yeah. a challenge then <laughs> i want you to go away and find me the tonnage of the scourge battleship and the ucm battleship well the volumes on there the tonnage yeah i don't want to go there but um <laughs> but the volume the volume the length um yeah. the beam yeah, you know that's that's all on there. So if you want to compare the real size of the ships in nice. the, in the real world, you can see all of that in there. It's just awesome. for just for your information. It's nothing. To, there's no rules attached to it. It's I don't just know. Fun. There, the, if if you're sitting down to a gaming quiz at a convention, it may come up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. I'll tell you what. Myself and Dave are going to take a quick break here, and when we come back, we're going to be having a look at the Post Human Republic and the Sheltari. And we're back, and it's time for a look at the Sheltari and the PHR. So, mm -hmm. uh, Dave, which of these do you want to go through first? Um, let's do the Sheltari first. The box, right. is, the box is the first one there. All right. So, uh, again, these are not the final boxes, yeah? Yeah, yeah, not the final boxes. Again, colour's not as good as the real ones. But... Mm. Well, that'll be okay. So yeah. I'll put that out the way, pop this open, and oh, let's get into it. Mm. So, and here. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's something different straight out the gate. So for this, I'm seeing you're getting some of the extra Mark III bases in with the uh, Yeah, you get the three, ex stuff. three extra small bases. Uh -huh. um, reason for that is that the Shaltari Cruiser Sprue, each Cruiser Sprue has one Void Gate on it. Ah, I see. Um, and the Void Gates, obviously you need a base for it, so mm. you don't get enough on the standard sprue, so we give you extras. All right, well, uh, let's pop this, because I've not actually had my hand on the Shaltari before. Mm. Or at least I don't think I've had my hand on their screen. You might have had one of them, maybe. They, they were one of the last we got, actually, mm. so you might not have seen these before. Okay, bag within a bag. Uh, can we eat? So I'll pop that to the side first. So the first thing we've got are our three uh, cruiser sprues. Yep. So we'll 
actually go through these properly. Mm -hmm. uh, so you've got this, which is... That's the dish for the mothership. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the Shaltari cruiser in particular builds mm -hmm. quite differently depending on what ships you're building. It's mm -hmm. actually got the most visual variation between all the different classes. Like yeah. you have a, They're the hardest to magnetise between certain groups, but mm -hmm. it gets a bit fiddly for me to describe <laughs> it all. But that one has that at the core. You'll see when we actually look at the studio uh, miniatures yes, that so we've got this, here. This is the core here. Uh, that's the core for the light cruiser. Uh -huh. Or is it? No, that's the standard. Uh, no, I think it no, is because you've yep, got the light top cruiser, and bottom. Light cruiser core, yes. That's yep. the standard cruiser core up there. Uh, which is here. Yeah. You've then got all your different weapon banks here for the different variants. Yeah. Uh, you've got this, which is a void gate. Yep. Uh, what this, is this bit? Uh, that bit there is the front end of the standard cruiser okay. middle section because... You cut. You don't have to use that if you're using a heavy cruiser. It has an extra weapon mount instead gotcha. of that. That's just a little cap at okay, the end. Gotcha. Uh, this is your void gate. Uh, you've then got another set of weapon banks here. Yeah, you've got quite a few weapon mm -hmm. banks with the Shaltari because there's, there's quite a few different yep. options. I'm assuming is this the new weapon mount? For yeah, yeah, the... that's your extra weapon mount. Yeah. Uh, so we've got the light. Uh, yeah, light here. cruiser core. We've got this. Uh, those are the fleet carrier wings. Mm -hmm. They go inside the main wings that I'll point out where they go in a minute. Okay, uh, we've got these uh, That's your standard spine. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the ships use that. Yep, and these. And those are your them. standard wing fillers. So gotcha. they don't do anything in game. They're mm -hmm. just part of the design. Mm -hmm. But if you're using the fleet carrier, you don't use those and you use the fleet carrier ones instead. Gotcha, gotcha. And then you have these, which are for your light. Yeah, they're your main wings. Mm -hmm. Which make the thing look so, so sleek once it's on the tabletop. Mm. And this is just uh, a little cap. Uh, yeah, something. that's for the light cruiser, because on the light cruiser, those two wings are mounted vertically yep. instead of horizontally. Got it. So that goes on the bottom of one of the wings to add a mount point for your flight stand. That's, oh, that's pretty much what that does. I see. Yeah. Such a clever design. Such high detail in the Sheltari, as always. Because the Sheltari, whenever you're, you've went to design these, you've... You've went beyond, I'm going to say it, you have went beyond <laughs> on these just for the amount of detail you've crammed mm. into these. They are encrusted, the mm. Shaltari. Respond very well to inks if you're painting them. If you look at them and you go, ah, just ink them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we then have the frigate sprue. So again, it's going to build four. So I assume these are the four main cores. Yep. You've got these, which are... Uh, those are one of the fronts. So the weapon option comes in the front end of the ship, effectively. Uh, gotcha. So those above you just there, uh, those are the left and right upper wings. They're right. standard for all of them, so okay. you, you get four sets of. Yeah. And so then you get two of these. each weapon. Like all the other frigates, mm -hmm. you can build two of any one class. Mm -hmm. so you build four, four frigates, but you can't build four of the same yeah. from the same sprue. Yeah. Um, Actually, I remember us talking about these because we looked at oh, them the last time you were yes. over. I like rub my hands with glee with those. <laughs> they're um, they're microwave cannons, which are. The weird Shaltari are not good at close action, which is basically sort of very close range guns. Yeah. Generally, their close action is the worst in the game, but they have that ship, yeah. the Amethyst, which has the best close action of any frigate in the game. <laughs> it's immensely powerful, mm. but it is that way because everything else isn't, so it ends up existing away from the rest yeah. of your fleet. It's a bit of an awkward fit. Mm. The Shaltari don't have a strike carrier mm -hmm. as well, it's worth mentioning, so there's right. only four different frigate variants you build gotcha. from that sprue rather than the five yeah, because for the you other factions. Yeah, yeah, and your void gates do what strike carriers do effectively. They're yeah. a bit weird, the Shaltari. Yeah, I do, I do kind of like the fact that you're getting an extra free one in there. Yeah, with well, yeah. three extra free ones because you yeah. get one each on the cruiser sprues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but because Shaltari's playstyle is so different, it's, it's, yeah, it's how they work. Yeah. Uh, one thing I'm noticing on the sprues here, which I hadn't looked at before, is you've actually numbered every component to actually say, okay, main bodies are component one, Side wings are what component two, and so on and so forth. Oh yeah, so yeah. Every really every every single part with. is numbered. Yeah. You know, model, that, model kit style. Mm. That is just super friendly for beginner mm. players because they're not going to get confused with this. Build mm. by numbers, you will not have a problem. Yeah. Right. So that is the sprue. And then we got, got the flat work for the Shaltari, which yeah, is yeah. obviously quite different from the other ones. Mm -hmm. So uh, to start with, we have again our recommended build sheet, which has your cruisers, your frigates, and your void gates. And on the back, you've got your cheat sheet again, which is just such a handy thing. Uh, we then jump into the actual other bits. So we've got the build for your cruisers, and again, the build for your frigates. So again, Yeah, so out. the frigates is a very simple mm -hmm. instruction set, because it's literally just glue the two wings on, and then pick one of the four fronts, and then yep. build the base. The other two are on the reverse mm. of that there. Yeah, again, it's... It's that, that user friendliness, you know, a beginner isn't going to have any issues putting this together. They're going to be yeah. very quick to it and take to it very quickly. And 
understand it. So we've got your base build cards. Yeah. To get you up and playing straight. Yeah. Off the same bat. again. There. All these starter fleets. They're all designed to um, cross pollinate. So you can buy the two player, for example, and the Shaltari starter. Yeah. And you can play the Shaltari starter against the UCM starter in the mm. two player. They're yeah. all roughly balanced between each other, and mm. these setups are all designed to play each other in yeah. starter set form. Yeah, and now we've got the, the sticker sheet again. I love the fact that you've actually added each faction symbol on here, because if you want, you can just trim that out. Yeah, it's kind of cool, and it's a, of the different names for the Shaltari ships, which yeah, are that's what I've been waiting to, to have a look at, because, again, you're getting all your ship names, but I expect these to be quite different. So we have the Waxing Moon, the Warhold, the Ages Scarlet, Azure Phantom. So I'm guessing this is, again, humanity naming these? I, it's a mix. Yeah. Um, the Shaltari do speak to humans, ah, so a lot of the time... They're, they're not Shaltari names, because Shaltari names you couldn't pronounce. So the Shaltari kind of out of basic courtesy and speed yeah. name yeah. their ships. Just, uh, you know, they say, this is my ship. Or, you know, if yes. they've had a long history and a lot of these ships with the Shaltari are many, many centuries old. Mm -hmm. And they were in the past when the Shaltari and the humans were perhaps more friendly than they are at yeah. the current state in the background. Yeah. See, that again, it's what I like is, you know, the Sheltari are the reason humanity was actually able to colonize the universe. If you're fresh to this universe, these are the guys that took us humans and went, look, here's how you get out and find new planets. These mm. cradle worlds are beautiful and wonderful. Go colonize them. And then the Scourge came yeah. and went, oh, shiny, those are ours. And there are, um, there are several mm. motives to that, but you need to read Reconquest Phase 2 for that. Ah, and no spoilers here. Oh, <laughs> oh, there is quite a bit of detail in the Drop Fleet rule book because it's mm. actually the most recent book in the narrative. But mm -hmm. there's a lot of that. I mean, some of these Chaltari ship names, they are humans naming mm. them, especially in more recent times. Yeah. But, you know, they have a sort of their naming feel. A lot of them are very mm. ancient feeling because yeah. the Chaltari have some of the oldest ships out yeah. there. Yeah, again, if you're curious about the, the fluff, the Chaltari are some of the best to read about within this universe. It's a really rich background in there. Definitely worth going to check out. Right, uh, same again. The the main Sheltari fleet, the final box cover. Again, it's bright, it's punchy, it's beautiful, and you can see. Yep, you're getting a little bit more there. Uh, but once we actually jump into the actual miniatures, uh, what are we seeing here? Does this... uh, so that's an amber class cruiser, uh -huh. um, standard gun cruiser. Mm -hmm. Sheltari guns are pretty powerful, mm -hmm. but somewhat arc limited, but not uh -huh. as arc limited as burn free weapons are. Mm -hmm. So you've got to be a little bit picky about where you manoeuvre, but mm -hmm. not too picky. They've uh -huh. got a big scan range, mm -hmm. Shaltari, so they're, you've got to play them differently. And that's an Emerald-class mothership in the bottom. Um, this, the recommended build for the Shaltari, if you're completely new to it, you don't know what to do, I'd strongly recommend you build it uh -huh. because you need one of those motherships. You pretty much must have one yeah, um, because it's the only way you're going to get troops down Yeah, because mm -hmm. that has a gate capacity and then all your void gates have mm -hmm. uh, the amount they can drop. Yeah. So they drop through the void gates, but they come from the mothership. Yeah, so that's, it's, it's yeah. hanging back just inside the range yeah, to yeah. actually teleport. Physically, back. that's where the troops actually are. They're mm -hmm. actually physically on board the mothership, yeah, and yeah. the void gates are just conduits for their teleportation mm -hmm. tech. That's pretty much what they do. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Next uh, up. And then you've got that's the back of the amber. Um, right. And that's the obsidian heavy cruiser yeah. there with three particle lances. Ooh. Particle lances are an interesting weapon that you need to Shaltari. Mm -hmm. uh, they bypass all armor, pretty much. Ah. Um, it's, they they automatically they automatically just do damage, but they yeah. don't have that many dice, so they're not they're not like bone free weapons. You don't keep rolling. You just they have a kind of quite finite cap, but you're going to reliably just chip away with them, which it's, you know is quite is quite cool. It's the old argument that you have with some gamers. Do I take the possibility of doing the ultimate, the epic nuclear explosion? Or do you just take a regular, hard-working gun that's just going to constantly chip yeah. you till you're dead? The Obsidian is very pointy mm. as a ship because it's front narrow. Mm. And with three guns, point front narrow, very pointy. Yeah. So you've got to be kind of... It's a different ship for mm. use. It has its purpose, though. Yeah. All right. Uh, next up, I believe we have uh, one of the frigates and a void gear. Uh, yeah, that's the um, that's the jade, mm -hmm. which has got a particle lance again. Okay. Uh, the cool thing with the Shaltari, although combat-wise in the starter set, you lose one of your cruisers effectively because mm -hmm. yes, the Emerald has guns, but they're not very good, mm. and the other factions have three cruisers that can all do decent damage. Yeah. But with the Shaltari, you've got four frigates that can all do damage. Yeah. Yeah. So, so they, it's a kind of different. Throw out a bit of pain. Yeah, yeah. The void gates have no real guns they've got a couple of things they can do but not very much so yeah it's firepower wise it balances out even though you've got a few more ships mm -hmm. well uh 
the Shiltari look fantastic. Uh, they're a faction that I have considered, but I still love the Scourge. <laughs> I, 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 I want to play the bad guy in this universe. Well, mm. like, are they even the bad guy? Because oh, well, we... Uh, it's debatable. Yeah, it's debatable. We read phase two. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> okay, so, PHR. Yeah. So, uh, these are... In the actual uh, drop zone commander, mm. I always love the look of these. I love the look of these as well. If these had been in the two-player starter set, they would have been mine. Mm. As it stands, I have a one-player starter set in my hands. It may disappear. <laughs> uh... <laughs> So, if I pop this open, we can start looking at the, the actual sprue layout for these guys. So, again, this is our, our print version of mm -hmm. the box, so if you want to put that out of the way. Yep. And we'll get a look at the sprues. Again, I'm not sure if I've had these in my hands before, I can't remember. Uh, I think you might have had the frigates, but not the cruiser before, Quite from possibly. what I remember. Quite it's been possibly. a bit of a whirlwind of a year, let's yeah. face so, it. So Again, <laughs> Mark three bases, the all important you know, damage trackers and altitude trackers, because altitude is such an important part of this mm -hmm. game. Uh, basically, if you're not meant to be in atmosphere, don't go there. Well, you die. You're, you're dead. <laughs> cruisers, cruisers, most frigates, they die in atmosphere. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so uh, we'll jump in under the close camera. So you've got, again, Frigate Sprue is going to build you four with all of its different options. So you've got the uh, antennas and stuff here. Yeah, those uh, are poseable, actually. Mm -hmm. the, um, like the Scourge, in a way, the um, mm -hmm. PHR have quite a bit of poseability in them in what yep. you can do with their gravity vanes. Yep. Uh, they sit underneath. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, those are for the um, Calypso. Mm -hmm. They're um, an ECM units. Yep. Very specialist. Every faction has one specialist frigate that does something to support your fleet that isn't just killing stuff. Yeah. And that's the that's the Calypso for the PHR. Okay. Uh, we've then got a couple of these, which I believe... Pods are for cannabis. a, a um, escort carrier, mm -hmm. which is the only escort carrier in the game ah, uh, at the moment with launch one. So nice. they can launch one base of fighters or bombers. Nice. But they're obviously fast because they're frigates. Mm -hmm. So that's got its own... Very good for reaching out and killing stuff right at the back of the board quite yeah. early game. That's or what they're good for. Running around firefighting if your cruisers have got split up from each other. Yeah, yeah, they're quite expensive and they're going to die quite easy. So you've got to be careful. But they're they're cool. Okay. Uh, next components. Uh, those are the underside of the strike carriers. Uh huh. Then we're moving around to here. Uh, then there you've got the standard pod, and uh -huh. standard pod has a few that's used for two different classes, which is why you've got four. Uh huh. Like I say before, you can build two of any. Mm -hmm. Class, but you can't build four of the same. But two yep. different ships use that part, which is why you get four of them. Okay. Effectively, uh, you then have uh, that's guns, mm -hmm. um, standard guns. The only frigate in the game with broadsides. Yeah. Um, which is a big part of the PHR and mm -hmm. how they work. Burn through lasers. Again, Lovely. the only frigate in the game with a burn through laser. Mm -hmm. Really cool. Um, very expensive though. Fifty points each. <laughs> um, and those are the wings. Mm -hmm. Um, I say wings. The the drive engine pods. the engine drive pods at the back. And yeah, again, yeah. they pose. So you can have them raised, lowered. Quite changes the look of the ship, and it's quite a cool thing you can yeah. do. Hobby choice, you know. Oh, sorry, it's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> I love the cruiser sprue for the PHR. Yeah. It's one of my favourites. Yeah. So again, you're going to get three of these in the box. Uh, you've got your main hull, which uh, because it's broadside, you have sort of an open panel here to actually slot in your different weapon options. So you've got these, which are some of the smaller cannons. Yeah, so they're, is that two rows of? Yeah, so they're yep. your um, light calibre. Uh -huh. uh, it's an important thing with the shout, with the PHR. They've got light, medium, and heavy. Mm -hmm. Light is good against frigates. Right. Medium is okay against everything. And yep. heavy is good against big ships. Gotcha. So uh, you, you've got a bit of choice. Those are the bays mm -hmm. um, for fighters and bombers. And you'll see, actually, on the hull, there's interior detail. Um, that you, you can see the doors. Hi for launching fighters and bombers. And if you mm -hmm. use those parts, you can see those doors through them. Mm -hmm. That's why they're hollow. I like that. You've then got these. Uh, those are all the heavy guns and the orbital bombardment ones, the kind of canted ones. They're mm -hmm. the orbital bombardment ones, and the ones ah, you're pointing at now are the heavy guns. Got they're it. all posable. They almost look like oars on triremes. <laughs> you know, you can kind of pose them differently. Yeah, yeah. Uh, then these are the mediums. Uh, yeah, medium standard guns. Uh, uh, and then you've got the mounts. For these. Yeah, mounts for the orbital bombardment ones mm -hmm. and for the standard heavies. Yep. Rear fins. Um, mm -hmm. There's two of those. Yep. Uh, then that's the double burn through, um, which is only for the heavy cruisers or one of the heavy cruisers. The PHR. Double burn through on a cruiser. Yes, Again, but it's, it's double burn through, but PHR burn throughs are half as powerful as ah, everybody else's. Okay. So that has the same firepower as the Berlin with the UCM, but the normal burn through that a lot of PHR cruisers get as a secondary weapon mm. is only half as powerful. 
Right. But it's your secondary weapon, not your primary. Yeah. Your primary is your broadsides. Yeah. So they're so. a little different. In terms of kit design of all of the range, I'm most happy, most proud of the PHR cruisers because mm. you can do... Or the way the heavies move and all the parts interact, you can get some quite different looking ships from this one sprue. Yeah. Well, I mean, like I love the modular design that you've came up with for this kit and all the others because it's it's so interchangeable. It feels like a proper military machine. It's just saying, mm. right, I need a ship for this task, a ship for this task, a ship for this task. Get me a base hull that'll do all three of these. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then a lot of the a lot of the customizing done with the PHR is done with the chin. Yeah, there's all the way the different chin parts move. Yeah. Well, speaking of the chin, so what is this? Uh, so that the the long one is mm -hmm. the standard cruiser chin. Uh huh. Uh, the short one is the light cruiser chin. Uh -huh. You notice the standard cruiser chin has a notch in it at the front. Uh, that yeah. notch is either filled with a gun turret that uh -huh. poses, or it's filled with a burn through laser. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there is your burn through laser. Yeah. That is a torpedo, um, which goes on the heavy cruiser only. Yeah. Uh, the, the PHR only, is the only the, game the only racing. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's the Achilles yeah. with the torpedo. Uh, then we have these. Uh, that's the turret mount for the turret I mentioned earlier. Okay. And uh, these? Uh, those are the two halves for the um, assault troop ship front. Mm -hmm. Cool thing with the PHR. Um, their troop ships are seriously armed. Yeah. Everybody else's troop ships are a lot cheaper. Yeah. And they just do one job, really, which is drop mm -hmm. masses of infantry and defence batteries. Yeah. So basically, these things could drop people off, come back up in... Out and they, they've got pretty much the same firepower as a regular cruiser mm. and troop ship capacity. And awesome. they're as tough as a heavy cruiser. <laughs> which is a bit of a weird thing with the PHR, yeah. but you pay your points for it. Yeah. You know, that's like how it is with the PHR. Mm -hmm. They're good, but expensive. Yeah. Uh, next up. Um, those are rear fins, posable again. Uh -huh. uh, another set of rear fins, posable. Uh -huh. uh, that is the front for the Achilles heavy cruiser. Uh -huh. uh, the torpedo goes between it and the hull. Yeah. That that's the it. rear fin, posable. Uh, that is the heavy cruiser rear spinal part for the chin. Yeah. Uh, they all use that. It just moves depending on what ship you're building. Yeah, it's, it's gorgeous, simply gorgeous. And the way everything's designed, it goes into a modular slot, so you're not going to be misaligning stuff. No, yeah, it's all just goes where it goes, you know, that's kind of... That's just super cool. Uh, right, so we get our Baseball. little baggie with our hook widgets and the, the stands. Mm -hmm. uh, we're then into the stuff, which is all of our paperwork. So, recommended build with cheat sheet on the back. We then have instructions for both cruisers. And yeah, this would be a good way of showing how the cruisers go, actually. The PHR do have the most complex instructions. And frigates. They're not uh, that so complex, really, but yeah. well, there's just like a lot of options. It's getting your base built and then deciding where you want to take it. You know, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, oh my god, that looks amazing right there. Turn it round and you've got every flavour of cruiser you could want. Because the PHR have more cruiser options than any other faction. Mm -hmm. They've got ten and everybody else has nine. Yeah. Um, and they're all on there, and there's there's a few parts because they have four weapons on both sides. Mm -hmm. um, but they're very simple once you, you know, quite easy to magnetize all those weapons too, which is yeah, quite yeah. nice. Awesome. Uh, you then also get your cards for your recommended build, and then we're on to the sticker sheet again. And I'm curious as to what the uh, the PHR named their ships. Mm. So we have Voltaire, Searching Truth, Silence, Isolator, Cloud Hunter. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're a bit more like they're a little airy, kind of airy, ethereal, yeah. a little bit more yeah. in, in their naming. This is all PHR naming. Mm -hmm. They name their own ships, and um, the, you know, yeah, and the UCM will become aware of what they're called at various stages. You know, yeah. they have spies, but it's, it's similar. such nice flavor that that gives you. Yeah, they're they're very kind of aloof and intelligent. Mm -hmm. You know, like one of their battleships is like Revelations mm -hmm. and all those kind of things. Yeah. That's they have a different feel. But if you don't like that, yeah. name your own. Yeah, yeah. you know. That's um, it's just to give a fully a flavorful feel to each faction with so the like naming. Spaceship make spaceship face. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> spaceship make spaceship face. Yeah, you wouldn't fit it on the base. Maybe you could. You'd go all the way round. <laughs> I don't know. John has some transfer paper. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, let's have a quick look at the the box art for this. Yeah, which is this. So we're we're seeing three cruisers, four frigates as standard. Yeah, it's actually worth um, quickly mentioning what these all are here. Oh, actually. Okay. Because um, the models, when we get onto the mini miniatures, mm. they're actually a slightly different setup we've got here. Okay. So your recommended build is the the Icarus uh -huh. Vanguard carrier, yep. which is a cruiser with a 
small carrier capacity, mm -hmm. kind of a bit like the Seattle for the yeah. UCM, but even more all-rounder-ish. Yeah. Uh, you've got the Hector heavy cruiser in the mm -hmm. middle, lots of standard guns and a double burn through. Yeah, Good, yeah. solid, average, reliable choice. Mm -hmm. um, then you've got the Theseus light cruiser. Yep. That is the only starter build that we recommend a light cruiser, mm -hmm. purely because the other ships cost a few more points than the other factions, so it's yeah. in there for balance. Uh, and then you've got two Europas, mm -hmm. um, standard gun frigates mm -hmm. with broadsides, potentially twice as powerful as all the other frigates in the game if you can get in the right place, yeah. which is a big caveat with the PHR. Yeah, well, I mean, like, broadsides yeah. can fire both directions at the same time, yeah? Yeah, which is wonderful if you can manoeuvre right. The yeah. PHR are actually probably the hardest faction in the game to use, mm. I would say, harder than the Shaltari are, yeah. but they have big rewards if you can... Unleash those broad, and you get to you know get say fire broadside, which is always cool. Fire never, gets, never gets old. And then you got two Medeas strike mm. carriers. The Medeas also have a small orbital bombardment capability, which is unique to them, which is Ooh. cool. PHR get a lot of like nice little toys that the yeah. other factions don't get so much, mm. but they just pay the points for it. Yeah, it, it feels like you're going to have some nice tactical flexibility with this. Yes, you're going to have to learn your movements and stuff, actually pick your fights. Yeah. But once you actually master it, it sounds as if it's going to be, you know, a nightmare on the table. It is, yeah. I mean, they do have certain gaps. Like, they don't have a cheap orbital bombardment cruiser yeah. like all the other factions do. Mm. They don't, which is a bit of a problem for the PHR sometimes. Mm. Um, they've got a limited amount of ships that are flexible mm -hmm. in terms of where they have to be on the table. Yeah. You have to be a lot more picky about where you put your ships, mm -hmm. but they are tough and they're very powerful. So, cool. you know, pick your poison. All right, uh, so let's have a look at a uh, closer look at some of the ships. So this is the one you were on about with the, the limited launch capacity. Yeah, the that's the left. Icarus there. Yeah, with it's got a medium turret at the front, mm -hmm. light, light mass drivers, uh, which are good at picking off frigates effectively. It's quite a good frigate killer, yeah. the Icarus, because Fight bombers are particularly good against frigates because they've got rubbish point defense. Mm -hmm. And then you've got Europa standard gun cr frigate there. Yep. Uh, moving swiftly along, we have... Your Hector, bottom left, um, your good heavy cruiser, and then the Theseus light cruiser up there. Yeah, and you, you can see the difference between the broadsides where on the Theseus you're seeing that double row of smaller yeah. guns. Yeah, yeah, you can, you can see, you get used to it very quickly as what all the guns mm -hmm. do. And there's the Medea. You can see the orbital bombardment gun on the chin. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then there's the um, the launch bays for the dropships. There's a cool piece of art in the book with all the little Poseidons mm. and Neptunes coming oh, out of, nice. of there. And then the last one? That's the Calypso. Uh, that's the one I mentioned earlier with the ECM. Mm. That screws with enemy weapons, so it oh. makes them less accurate when they're shooting Sweet. at you. So it protects your ships. Every, every faction has a ship that protects your ships in some fashion or mm. another. And that's, that's not in the recommended build, but it's on there. Yeah, so is it, is it maybe something to look at whenever you're stepping up to your next level of games? Yeah, it's a good thing. They're, good, they're especially good to have with battleships. Mm -hmm. You know, if you've got your Admiral, you've paid loads of points for it, yeah. put a couple of those next to it to protect it from big weapons especially. Yeah. You'll see how they work when you read the book, but they, they help protect big, expensive ships. Mm. Okay, so uh, is that everything for Wave 1? Um, it is, yeah. Um, obviously, the other things in Wave 1 are the rule book, the two-player, um, and yeah, the rule book and the two-player. And the cards, yeah, yeah. which we've so, mentioned. Should we have a little look at these? Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll quickly scan these under yeah. the camera. Just let everybody get a little last peek at them. And, uh, well, let's start with the uh, frigates. Which just There's look. your Europas. Oh, they're so sleek. You can just imagine them knifing through space. Yeah, they've got a sort of space dolphin look to them yeah, a little yeah. bit. There's your Medeas. Uh -huh. so Two strike carriers. Yeah, and um, they do feel like, again, just predatory little things. They're just going to mm. nip in, drop troops off. You know, maybe not something that's going to take over an, ent an entire city, but something that's maybe going to go for a yeah, little guerrilla warfare and mess they drop up UCM armor. lines. They drop armor, which is oh, good for excellent. good for killing other people's ground assets. Mm -hmm. Not that great for holding ground, though, for various reasons, against yep. OB and things. Mm -hmm. But again, you'll see how that all works out. Yep. That's actually an Ajax, which is, isn't in the recommended build. Ah, right. Um, the Ajax is a dedicated frigate killer. Mm -hmm. It's got all light guns all the way down the side, which makes it amazing at killing frigates. Mm. It's also actually, weirdly, not that bad at orbital bombardment just because you've got 24 dice. It rolls the most dice of any ship in the game, pretty yeah. much. And for if it's not an OB weapon, and that's not, mm. you're looking at sixes to damage things on the ground, but you've 24 got 24 shot. dice. So, you know, it's, it's, I said they didn't have an OB cruiser, and they don't, but this that, one's, do that one can kind of do yeah. the job, but... And I'm looking at it, it's got a burn through. It has got a burn front, through at the front, yeah. kicks. which is cool, and it's always nice to have some burn throughs around mm -hmm. for the flash rule that I mentioned earlier. There's yeah. your Theseus light cruiser. 
Yeah. Uh, that is in the recommended build. Mm. Again, just so sleek, so organic. Yeah, a little bit cheaper, mm. um, which is cool. And the PHR one can be taken on its own, whereas all the other factions with light cruisers, you have to take two. Ah, you can't take a squadron of one, you've got to take two. So they're not just kind of the cheap option of the cruiser. You know, they have their own place in the game. Yeah. Uh, this one is the Bellerophon, which isn't in the recommended build. Okay. Uh, the Bellerophon is like the Hector, except that it's got launch bays on the yeah. side. When I mentioned the PHR didn't have many flexible ships, this is one of the ones that is. Mm -hmm. Because it's fighters and bombers, it's not arc limited. Yeah. So they can hit anyone anywhere, except for that burn through at the double burn through at the front, which is front narrow. Double burn through. Oh. Which is always cool. But yeah, the Bellerophon is going to be a popular ship mm. for the PHR. Good choice. Expensive, though. <laughs> Expensive, which is why it's not in the recommended build, because it would unbalance things a bit. All right, now I'll, I'll quickly grab these, which are our... Void void gates. Gates. Yeah, we don't. I didn't make up enough bases to have these because these are unique to the Shaltari. So mm -hmm. there's you get three of these little one piece models. Yeah, and in the game, what is the the limit in the starter set for bringing these to the tabletop? Um, Do they have a well, point cost? three. Uh, you've got three in the starter set. Right. Um, they're only we moved the points a little bit. I think they ended up being just over ten. Okay. Between ten and fifteen points each, so they're pretty cheap. Mm -hmm. Um, they do. There are some you're going to want to have a few of like... Yeah, they have a few uses actually. They kind of take the place of defense batteries as well because mm -hmm. the Shaltari don't have defense batteries. Mm -hmm. So they're pretty good for holding off enemy dropships, and uh... especially bulk landers don't like them because they can destroy them in the air before they land, mm -hmm. which is quite cool with the charged air rule that they have. Nice. Now, this I would say is possibly the Achilles heel of the force. If your opponent gets at this, yes, you're not going to have a good day. Especially like, like any war game. With a starter set, mm. you know, if you kill key things early, you're yeah. going to unbalance the game because you just don't have enough resources to. Yeah. You know, if you kill kill the emerald, and then the Shaltari are pretty scuppered when it comes to scoring points for objectives. Yeah. But in drop fleet, there's always ways of scoring points with your ships too. So mm. losing your ground deploying things doesn't instantly mean you lose the game. Yeah. It just but it's it's something that yeah. those Shaltari players are going to be having to look to. to yeah, you know, to look for it, be careful with it. You know, keep the shields down for as long as possible because then it's going to have a tiny signature. Yeah. You know, the opponent's going to have a hard time actually getting shots off at it. Keep it safe. Keep it secret. Keep it hidden. Yep. <laughs> okay. Then we have this. That's the Obsidian, with and the, um, that's the a heavy cruiser with the three particle lances. Mm -hmm. And that one's pretty cool. It's actually the cheapest heavy cruiser that the Shaltari have. Um, because it's a little bit more limited because of the arcs. Ah, uh, I see, I see. Yeah, the Onyx, um, the Onyx and the Jet are a little bit more expensive because mm. they're slightly better, possibly in game, but it depends. Aye. People like particle lances because they're reliable. Yeah, that that again, it's that old argument. Yeah. Reliable or nuke. Yep. <laughs> Next up, uh, this one isn't in the recommended build. This mm. is the Turquoise. Um, it's another cruiser uh -huh. variant. Those orbs at the front. They're unique to Shaltari. They're a really weird combination of weapon in that they're close action and orbital bombardment at the same time. So it's a it's like I said before, the Shaltari don't have much in the way of good close action weapons. Yeah. These are decent. They're not as good as other factions, cruisers with lots of close action, like the Scourge Wyvern, for example, mm -hmm. is better than this. But this can do orbital bombardment and the Wyvern can't. Aye. So you've, you're, you're you know, balancing out multi tool yeah. for being amazing. Yeah, yeah. Job. This is alternate fire, so you can do either with it, which is cool, you know. But it's a bit different, which is why it's not in the recommended build. Mm. You know, we've put a lot of thought into which ships but we think you should try to play again. With. Keep it simple, stupid. Yeah, ex exactly. <laughs> okay. uh, those are your two jades. Mm. Um, they've got particle lances, frigates. With particle lances, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah very pointy. Uh, but yeah. being pointy isn't really a problem for a frigate because mm. they're fast and. They've only got the one weapon, so it doesn't really matter for them yeah, quite yeah. so much. And uh, then you've got your two topazes. Um, your topaz is your standard gun frigate for the Shaltari. Mm -hmm. uh, a little bit more powerful than other factions' gun frigates, but arc limited. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's front arc only, so you've got to be a mm -hmm. bit more picky. You know, something like the UCM Toulon is front side. Mm -hmm. So once frigates can't turn on a dime, they still yeah. have to turn like any other ship. Yeah. So once you once they've gone past, you know, you can get at them that way. So the Topaz is slightly a disadvantage, but it's a little bit more powerful, so, yeah. you know... Well, it's, it's, cool. it's all yeah. a balancing game, is what I'm saying here. You know, you're, mm. you're making stuff have multiple roles, but it's, it's losing out here. You know, you're not just saying, oh, you can do everything. You're you're the god of battle, you know. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's no such thing. Everything has something that's going to want to yeah. hunt it. Everything has something that's going to want to hunt. You know, it's, it's going to be finding those synergies where you actually 
play a game and actually lead your opponent into this trap with the things waiting to actually take out the ship. Yeah. You know, so it's going to be really mm. interesting and really mm. fun finding that out. Mm. Now, everybody, that is everything for Wave 1 Drop Fleet Commander. Stay tuned because myself and Dave will be back at some stage to talk about Waves 2, 3 and, and 4. four. So we'll Thank see you. you there.